Welcome back to Free Energy in Physical Chemistry. I'm Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. So we're talking specifically about Gibbs free energy um, in the past few videos. And in some cases, it might be helpful actually if you're dealing with an oxidation reduction reaction to use something referred to as the Nernst equation um, to calculate delta G. However, if you're doing that, um, you actually have to know something else first. You actually have to know, ultimately, the cell potential of the particular oxidation reduction reaction you're doing, and then from there, you can calculate delta G. Now, one thing here is that one very simplified form of the Nernst equation is that delta G at equilibrium is equal to negative NFE cell at equilibrium. Okay, remember, anytime you see these little degree signs, and there's a superscript on a variable, that means it's at equilibrium. Likewise, down here, this is what you would normally use if you're trying to calculate the delta G, is you have delta G not at equilibrium is equal to negative NF times the cell potential not at equilibrium. Okay, so this, one's at, this one is at equilibrium, this one is not. Okay, now what is N? Well, in every oxidation reduction reaction, we know there are electron transfers. So N would be the number of electrons that are transferred in the reaction. So for example, if you had a reaction where you have ethanol and you oxidized it to acetaldehyde like this, that's a two electron transfer, so N would equal two in that case, okay? Um, if, for example, you had something like this, if you had molecular oxygen, molecular oxygen is a free radical, and you reduced this to, say, superoxide, that's an oxidation reduction reaction because oxygen was reduced into superoxide. One electron was added, so that would be an N of equal to one. Okay, so N is just the number of electrons transferred. F is the Faraday constant. Um, F is basically 96,485, and the units of this are something like joules per mole volt, okay? The volt in this comes from the fact that the cell potential is in volts. In fact, the cell potential basically is a voltage, okay? It's the units of voltage, okay? And we just use the symbol E when we're talking about chemical reactions and processes, okay? So this is one simplified form of the Nernst equation. However, if you want to calculate the cell potential when you're not at equilibrium, you have to use another form of the Nernst equation. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to derive that and ultimately show how to use it. Okay, so we're going to start ultimately with two definitions of delta G at equilibrium. The one we've already mentioned, which is the Nernst form, is equal to negative NFE cell at equilibrium. But the other form that we saw in a previous video is that equilibrium free energy is equal to negative RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. So by equating these two quantities, we ultimately get this. Okay, that's what we get. Now another thing we saw in a previous video, when we have delta G not at equilibrium, another form we saw that as is it's equal to the standard delta G at equilibrium plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. Okay, reaction quotient is defined exactly the same way as the equilibrium constant, except again, the reaction quotient is not at equilibrium. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to subtract RT ln of Q from both sides. So notice I get delta G at equilibrium is equal to delta G not at equilibrium minus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. All I did is I took this term and I moved it to the other side by subtracting it, okay? Now, I'm gonna make a substitution here. I know that delta G not at equilibrium is equal to negative NF times the cell potential not at equilibrium. So I'm gonna substitute that in for this delta G. I can also do the exact same thing with this equilibrium delta G. I can substitute in negative NF times the cell potential at equilibrium, and I'm gonna do that. So notice what I get. Negative NF E cell at equilibrium equals negative NF E cell not at equilibrium minus RT ln of the reaction quotient, okay? 
Well, what I can do is, is I want to get these E cells by themselves. So I'm going to divide all sides through by NF. Notice on this side, the NF actually cancel. And then if I do NF on this side, also notice that NF cancels here, okay, at least with one of the factors of the NF here. And ultimately what I get is the cell potential not at equilibrium is going to be equal to the cell potential at equilibrium minus, notice I get this RT over NF, okay, this thing right here. It's essentially just a scalar times the natural log of the reaction quotient. And remember, the reaction quotient was defined this way for a reaction where we have A moles of A plus B moles of B in equilibrium with C moles of C. And the reaction quotient is defined this way. So if I know these concentrations at a, at a particular point in time, I can plug those in here with the appropriate exponents, take the natural log, multiply by the gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin, divide by the number of moles of electrons transferred in it, divided by the Faraday constant, take the negative of all that, and then add onto it the cell potential at equilibrium. Now, what is the cell potential at equilibrium? Well, we talked about that in a separate video, but let's just remind you what that is. This is something that you actually calculate by looking it up in a table, okay? And it requires a very simple formula. The cell potential at equilibrium is ultimately the sum of two half reactions, okay? And what that is, is you take the cell potential of the cathode and you subtract the cell potential of the anode, okay? So the way to think about this is the cathode is where the reduction occurs, okay? This is where the reduction occurs. The anode is where the oxidation occurs. The way I remember that is oxidation starts with a vowel and anode starts with a vowel. Likewise, reduction starts with a consonant and cathode starts with a consonant, okay? So they go together. So if you're looking at the reaction where something gets reduced for that half reaction, that's where the cat that's the cathode, and that's this cell potential right here. And then you subtract from that the half reaction of the of the oxidation, and that's the E anode. The sum of these two, or I usually should say the difference, is going to be the cell potential at equilibrium. That's what you plug in there. When you take this difference of the cell potential in this whole term right there, that is the cell potential when you're not at equilibrium. Okay. So that is how you find that. And actually what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to do an example of how you would use the Nernst equation to calculate um, the cell potential not at equilibrium. Um, but what we're going to do after that is how to calculate the equilibrium constant if you know the Gibbs free energy at equilibrium. Okay. Now before we go into the next video, I want to show you one other thing. Our ultimate goal here was to calculate the cell potential not at equilibrium. So, like I said, when you're doing a lot of reactions, it may be difficult um, to calculate. Uh, may be difficult to calculate the free energy, the actual free energy of a reaction not at equilibrium. But if you know, if you can calculate the cell potential, you measure all the concentrations. These are constants. You measure the temperature, of course. You know the number of moles if you know the reaction, and you can calculate this if you can calculate E cell not at equilibrium. All you do to find the delta G not at equilibrium is you take the number of moles times negative one times the Faraday constant times the E cell that you literally just found in the Nernst equation. And that would be how you calculate the delta G not at equilibrium. Okay, so that's a roundabout way to calculate it. The first thing you would do is you would calculate the cell potential for the redox reaction at equilibrium using a table of E cathode minus E anode. Then you would use the Nernst equation with known concentrations and temperature and then you could calculate E cell not at equilibrium and then calculate delta G. And that's how you go about doing that. In another video, the next one, like I said, we'll do an example of all of that using actual numbers. See you in the next video.